So we're going to go over all of the skills that we have covered with Miss Cece, and this will give you uh, one spot that you can go to to review everything. So this first exercise is relax on a mat. It's a command-free exercise, which is actually what makes it impactful. So we want Miss Cece to learn that she can work through uh, this exercise 100% on her own. And what this looks like is she comes over to the mat and then gives me a, a D-O-W-N and then rests her little chin down on the mat. So this is perfect. Her relaxed body posture is telling her that everything that's going on around her is A-OK. -okay. So this can be utilized as a desensitization and counter conditioning tool moving forward for Miss Cece. So if she runs into something that gets her uh, wound up, excited, or anxious, so it could be a garbage truck, a bicycle, um, children, a specific type of dog she's not used to seeing, then what you can do is break out the mat, do relax on a mat, have her hang out, and then she'll periodically uh, check in with whatever the stimulus is that gets her wound up and this relaxed body posture will let her know, oh, that's okay, it's not that big of a deal, this is something that we can handle. So typically uh, a, a great opportunity is to take your dog to a park and all the different crazy uh, stimulus that's going on there can be really beneficial. So I'll usually leash up my dog, do relax on a mat, they'll check in with things, even if they meander around, A, they're safe on a leash, but then uh, what we're looking for, B, is that they come back over and relax on the mat and um, sell themselves back down. So then CC realizes, you know, I got a little wound up, I can settle my emotions back down and uh, calm back down via relax on a mat. So very, very uh, pivotal exercise and really beneficial. I've had folks use it for um, plane rides, for dog friendly hotels, and just a whole slew of things. So it, it can really be a great tool in your toolbox. Um, one last piece there, when you know she crawled up in my lap, um, you can feel free to tuck your hands into your lap so that she realizes that she's not gonna be able to get treated that way just by uh, hanging out down there on the ground. Um, is the way she's going to get treats. So let's toss a treat off the mat here and keep on uh, moving along. So this next exercise, we're just looking for some good eye contact. These are our name games. So as soon as we say uh, her name, we want her to just hone in on us. So I'm going to go, um, let's back up just a little here. Okay, so I'm going to say CC. Drag a treat up towards my face. As soon as she makes eye contact, I'm gonna click that moment, let her know she's done the right thing. Then I'm gonna do it, CC. Good, with no drag of the treat up towards my face, she's gonna do it on her own. Then I'm actually gonna to try to trick her a little bit. I'm gonna have this delicious treat that I drag out to the side. She's gotta come back and make eye contact. CC, very good. Then I'm gonna take a treat, toss it on the ground, and she's gonna be interested in the treat but has to be able to turn back towards me. CC. Very good. So after all these name games, that's an excellent time to work on um, some recall. So just toss the tree and say, CC, come. Good. And uh, during recall, you if you're utilizing the clicker, then um, click it when she gets all the way up to you. If she's doing a thing where she's not coming all the way up, or click the moment she looks at you if she's doing a thing where she checks in with you and then keeps going on about her business. So those are really the two different ways to um, use this as a practical application tool. Uh, so we'll do one more recall for you and then we'll keep on moving on. CC, come. Um, so actually one, one side note that I did want to mention on the recall. So you start to build up uh, distance, so get further and further away, then you start to work under different uh, forms of distraction. So work inside, work in the backyard, front yard, then in a park in that order, and it just increased the difficulty over time. So another thing you can do when you're in the in the house that's kind of fun, you can take a treat, toss it over here. CC, come. You're just kind of tossing it around corners, and uh, particularly when you're working with a partner and doing recall having her go off of earshot to where she just has to be able to hear where you are and find you is a really, really good tool. 
um, particularly because if our pups are uh, get away from us, we're out hiking or something, then we want them to really be in the mode that as soon as we say their name that they try to track us down. So uh, very, very beneficial. Cece, sit. Girl. Cece, down. Girl. Cece, stay. Oh. I actually want to do that, uh, do that stay. Let's do another stay for you, you little sweetie. Cece, stay. Come. Um, so in that last one, I actually noticed that she was uh, breaking right as I was saying it. So it was honestly a little bit of, um, I want to be very clear, she cannot get up and move until I tell her. Uh, CC come. I just want to do one more repetition to um, really let her know that's what we're looking for. Uh, so next I want to go over a space exercise. So it's an anti-jumping exercise. We'll stop her from um, jumping on you and we're looking for about a two foot bubble around us that she stops shy. This is, I would consider this acceptable. So she's, she would be right on the cusp of um, what we're looking for. So it looks like this. So I'll walk away from you. CC, CC space. that little space, space, so you notice I tried one from behind, one from the front, space, one from the side, just a little bit close, I'm going to try that one again, CC, space, excellent, so with the clicker, um, you can be as uh, meticulous as you want, and that information is really good for her when she doesn't get a click, um, you're letting her know that nope, you didn't quite fulfill the requirement, and that's really good information for her. So just an FYI on that. Um, you don't need to feel pressured to give her a click and treat because we've um, got these tools at our disposal. We really want her to know uh, when she's done the right thing. So no click, no treat. Very good information as well. Cece, touch. Girl. So this is our targeting exercise. We want Cece, <clears throat> touch, to position herself exactly where we want her to be. So this can be great for loose leash walking. Um, if she starts getting in a mode of recall, she comes up and doesn't uh, get as close as you would like her. Um, CC, touch. Touch. <laughs> um, so it's the beginnings of starting to do some fun stuff like that and get her to go in between your legs. Um, and has a multitude of applications. It's utilized <clears throat> for uh, agility courses, so that's how you initially get your dog to do it. They're simply following a target. So it uh, has a, a multitude uh, of applications, but usually I just like to use it as an attention-getting mechanism and uh, during loose leash walking to get my dog positioned uh, exactly where she needs to be. So uh, next, let's go over your lead it. So simply take some treats, lead it. Good. And what we're looking for is exactly that, that, that real retraction. Lead it. Uh, you'll notice when she pulls back there. That's perfect. We want to really pull back from the treats and let us know that she's um, easing up on it. So we want to work with that uh, exercise with as many different items as we can. It really helps to um, make this really solid that regardless of what item we're going after, we need to leave it. Leave it. Cece, leave it. <laughs> so that was a little prolonged, but that's okay. We'll give her another shot. See how she does this time. So I'm just gonna take it behind my back. Leave it. Good. A little better. Let's give her another shot. Cece, leave it. Very good. You sharp little dog. She's so smart. She's so smart. Um, so that's perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. She's interested, but can pull back. Um, one thing to take note of, if she actually gets something in her mouth, then I will tell her leave it as well. So um, I don't distinguish between leave it and a drop it. If she gets something in her mouth, then I tell her leave it. If she is interested in something and doesn't have it in her mouth yet, I tell her leave it. Um, just a little side note on that one as well.
Um, so lastly, with our little cutie, what we've done um, is, uh, at least for this piece, we'll get her leashed up and go over her loose leash while walking as well. But we have set her up with a, uh, a mat. <laughs> CC mat. We'll let her know she did a good job coming over. Here you go, sweetie. CC stay. Free. <laughs> CC, free. Good girl. She found some treats in there. That's of prime interest. That's fine. <laughs> um, so this could be utilized, let's say that uh, she, you've got some, some guests coming over, you want to come over to a specific area and hang out until she's released or you're cooking, uh, or uh, honestly, dogs really like repetition and to know what's expected of them. So uh, anytime she should just be hanging out, it's, it's a great opportunity to just uh, set her up, tell her mat, and the only difference will be if you're utilizing... Um, a specific mat. She's she's a really smart lady, so she shouldn't have too much of a hard time with this. But it simply looks like this. I'll just toss a treat off the mat. See, CC mat, and just click her as soon as she hits the mat. And you, I would just do that a few times just to really get that across to her. CC mat, that it's this specific mat that she's um, that she needs to be accustomed to. So that would be uh, just my one little tidbit. I would just do it from three different angles. CC mat, uh, but as you know, she's she's a really smart lady. Yeah, you're crafty, huh? CC, Matt. Good girl, stay. Free. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl. Um, so that is perfect. She is such a smart little lady. Uh, we'll get her leashed up and um, go over 